Hey guys and welcome. This is episode 91 of Off The Sprue. In this video, I'm taking a look at a brand new uh, hobby product, uh, AK Interactive's Real Colors Paint Markers. Guys, AK recently launched their Real Colors Paint Marker range. Now this is a, quite a cool product. And uh, in this video, I'll be uh, showing you a few of the ways that I found uh, that I could use these markers. Now this is by no means uh, the definitive uh, guide on using these. Uh, this is merely uh, some of the methods that I've been using to uh, utilize these markers. The paint markers I'm using in this video uh, has been sponsored by Supernova Studio. These come in sets as well as individual markers and guys these are flying off the shelves. So uh, if you want to get your hands on them do order yours as soon as possible. Uh, these are very popular at the moment. Guys as I said in the beginning of this video these are actually paint markers, felt tipped paint markers filled with uh, acrylic paint and as you can see matte finish fast dry and waterproof very cool indeed the uh, the product brochure goes into a lot of detail and uh, you can see there's quite a few examples there where uh, these markers have been used to great effect and uh, guys this is a product that's intended for for precision work in my opinion As you can see there are plenty of ways to use this uh, for for detailing and especially weathering now these are based on the real color range uh, of, uh, of AK paints. I'm a big fan of this, uh, this paint. Comes in jars and also the markers. However, there is one difference. The, uh, the bottle paints, the ones in the jars, are in fact lacquer paints. And uh, they will need to be thinned with uh, the real colors lacquer thinner. So keep that in mind. The, uh, the markers are water-based acrylic. So uh, the same colors, the same pigmentation, but uh, different types of paint in uh, these two products. How does this work? Well, I took a little piece of off-cut uh, evergreen styrene sheet, and uh, this is indeed fast drying. Let me show you. Uh, the, uh, the tip can, do, can be used for, for fine precision work, and being a marker, you can either draw thick lines or thin lines. Uh, depending on how you use this marker. Now, as I said, fast drying. And uh, as you can see there, the paint is already dry. I can run my finger across this, no smudging. And uh, to get this to smudge, I really have to apply pressure. So indeed, fast drying, and uh, this is a great uh, product. Now guys, don't be fooled by the thickness of the, uh, the felt tip on these markers. The, the more pressure you apply, the thicker the line becomes. And uh, if you want to draw really thin lines, just have it barely touching the surface. And that is how I found I could control the, the thickness of the line. Let's uh, take a look at a few examples. This is the uh, engine from my Zuke Mura F4C Phantom. You can see there that uh, scratch bolt uh, line that I added there is still a bit dark. And I would like this to be more of a metallic color. So I'm going to use my gunmetal uh, colored uh, paint marker and uh, it's easy as doing this just running that across that line paint goes on really smoothly and uh, because it's in marker form uh, you can really control this very precisely you can see there the paint's already dry so uh, guys a really cool product uh, ideally suited for this sort of detailing work uh, in the past uh, we, you probably use a brush or whatever but uh, this makes it so easy and that fine tip there uh, you can easily use just to, to make sure that you catch all the, uh, all the little corners on uh, the scratch bolt uh, hoses and lines that I added to this, uh, to this engine. Makes it really easy to get into all those tight little spaces and uh, the paint goes on really smoothly. So uh, if you have a, uh, a paint job that will require this sort of precision work this is the product for you. Also really loving the, uh, the color that I'm getting there from that uh, gunmetal marker. A second application could be to cover up these little spots. This is a spot where the paint chipped off the, uh, the photo etch and I'm going to use dark aluminium just uh, to, to touch that up. Again this is a marker, felt tip marker and uh, it's very easy just to use the tip there 
and uh, just replace the, uh, the paint on that uh, little spot where it chipped off. After some additional weathering, this is the result. It's as though that uh, mistake was never there. So uh, you can use this for touch-up work as well because it's in marker form. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the, the rocket parts on the Tacom Apache. This could do with some paint chipping and uh, I decided to use my paint markers as well, the metallic ones. I ended up using three colors, the first being uh, aluminium, dark aluminium and gun metal. And these can be used in different ways. I can use the edge of the felt tip just to apply some, uh, some silver, some, some aluminium color to the, uh, the edge of that rocket part where uh, paint would typically uh, be, uh, be worn off. You can see very effective for this uh, application. Guys, you can also use the tip uh, depending on how you do your chipping and uh, apply uh, very little pressure to that, to that uh, marker. And uh, that's an efficient way of also uh, uh, applying some, some chip paint. You can see there making use of the, uh, the marker itself and the tip. Now, if you do make a mistake, how do you fix it? Very easy, because this is a acrylic paint, you can use acrylic thinner. In this case, I'm using uh, some airbrush thinner from Vallejo, and you can see there, very easy to uh, remove the, uh, the paint uh, that I'm not happy with. If perhaps you use the sponge technique for, for paint chipping, it's just as easy. Just transfer some of the, uh, the paint from the marker onto this little piece of sponge, and uh, proceed to use this as uh, you would with uh, the normal uh, way of using the sponge technique. Just uh, pressing this onto the surface of that rocket part and laying down some paint. Now because this is fast drying paint, uh, you would need to reapply this more frequently. Uh, but as you can see there, very nice uh, results indeed for paint chipping. This uh, can be applied uh, on so many different uh, models in so many different ways. So there you go guys, second way of doing this, using the, uh, the paint markers. The third example is from my uh, 35 scale Hobby Boss Jackal build. The uh, British Army Corporal that's assisting me on this build pointed th this uh, cool detail out to me. The, uh, the suspension can be raised or lowered on the Jackal and sometimes the driver will forget that the uh, vehicle is in the lowered mode and pull away and of course these rubber marks will be visible on uh, the, the wheel well then. So first I start with uh, the wheels, in this case from DEF model, these aftermarket uh, resin wheels, and uh, I need to get the correct shape of the wheel. For this I'm using some paper and a pencil, just uh, tracing more or less the outline of that wheel just to, to get the correct curve, and uh, the next step is just to cut that out. And uh, I now have a rough mask that I can use uh, for the actual weathering. So there we go, rubber black, as well as my little paper mask. And uh, this is now placed on the, uh, on the side of the wheel well there. And uh, I just use the tip of the marker and uh, draw in those, uh, those rubber marks. Again, the less pressure you apply to the tip, the thinner the line becomes. And uh, guys, because this is quick drying, uh, quick drying paint, you'll see uh, the results are immediately visible very easy to apply. So there we go, nice little effect and uh, I believe we are quite close to the, uh, the real world example. Nice little detail added to the Hobby Boss Jackal. Guys and then finally I really wanted to uh, push the uh, limits of this product and see how fine work I really could do. So this is a round patch on a 35 scale pilot figure and uh, I wanted to see if I could paint in the uh, Longbow Apache patch. Now this is really detailed work. Do not strain your eyes, guys. Use magnification. Uh, unless you have eyes like Superman, the rest of us mere mortals need magnification. So I'm going to start with the base color for that patch, in this case, deck tan. And that will be the white area of the, uh, the real world patch. Using the tip of that paint marker, I start applying this uh, this light colored paint, very easy to control and uh, very easy just uh, to fill that little circle. Next I'm going to use buff, buff colored uh, paint marker 
and uh, I'll be using this color just uh, to paint in the, uh, the, the name tag on her flight suit. Very easy to do indeed and uh, with the, uh, the quick drying, fast drying uh, paint in the marker, very easy to apply. Next uh, I decided to do something else. I used ivory and uh, see if I could touch up the, uh, the raised detail, the folds on her flight suit. And guys, this is really where these markers excel. I can really see this working very well for, for figure painting, especially detail work such as this. And you can see they're either using the side of the, uh, the marker or the, uh, the tip. You can easily uh, uh, bring out the, the raised detail, the folds on that, uh, on that flight suit. So lots of applications for figure painting uh, with these paint markers. Now to do the, uh, the detail painting on that patch, you can either go the traditional way and use a, a very fine detail brush. And uh, in a similar way that we work with the sponge, you can also transfer paint uh, from the marker felt tip to your detail brush. And that's one way of using these markers. However, I decided that I wanted to use the marker tip itself. So I uh, decided to use a rubber black and again uh, deck tan and see uh, how fine detail I could lay down on this patch. Now guys, again, uh, if you uh, apply very little pressure to the tip of that marker, you can see that it's possible to uh, put down a very, very fine line. And uh, don't worry if perhaps you do um, apply too much pressure and the line becomes too thick because you can easily uh, touch up the, uh, this, this mistake with, uh, with the base color of that patch being a deck tan. So that's the initial try. And then I just used the, the deck tan uh, marker and I just corrected my circle. You can see the perfect circle. For the green Apache image in the center of the patch, I used interior green. And uh, really at this scale, this just becomes a collection of dots. So using the tip of the marker, laying down my green paint, more or less in the, uh, the shape of the Apache. And there's the uh, preliminary result. So all that remains now is a uh, yellow and uh, red. For this, I used my Vallejo acrylics and a fine detail brush, uh, as I don't have those colors in, uh, in markers. Now for the, for the name tag itself, I'm following the, uh, the same procedure, laying down black and then just uh, correcting those lines with the, the, the tip of the, uh, the buff marker. So guys, there you go. I actually, uh, I was able to achieve a, a result that I, that I like. You can see there's the Longbow Apache patch as well as the name tag. So it's entirely possible to do very, very fine detail work with these markers. Now guys, I just uh, touched on uh, four examples, four ways of using these markers. This is by no means the, the uh, definitive guide on using this. And uh, I suspect that over the next few months, as more people start using this, we'll be seeing all sorts of really innovative ways of using uh, AK's uh, Real Colors paint markers. That's it then for video 91. Thank you for joining me. Please uh, follow me on Instagram for uh, frequent updates on all my builds. Thank you for watching.